the patch pod. All right, I'm Eugene Kim. I'm um, host with Pauline Wong and John Bogner. Hi. Hi. All right, so today we're going to talk about how to choose a wedding photographer. Um, we thought we thought we I thought this would be an exciting sort of like in perspective. Um, so we're not really talking in a way of like um, asking how clients to choose us, but how like from our past experience, like how a lot of the a lot of the clients chose us or chose other wedding photographer in general. Um, and I think it, I think that will definitely help some of the um, potential um, couples who are looking to get getting married. Um, to probably like to figure out which steps to take in order to find the photographer that will work best with them um, on their wedding day, help them on the wedding day, take the good photos, um, no fuss, <laughs> um, just have really good enjoyment experience. We came up with um, seven steps that we like. We we actually had a discussion. Like uh, um, we thought. These seven steps should help you guys as a client, um, or you know, maybe if you're the wedding photographer listening, maybe these could be your potential um, clients could could go through, um, and we just thought this might be a good sort of steps to to go. Um, so number one, with do you need a photographer only, or photographer and videographer, or do you need only videographer? Number two is setting a budget maybe plus alpha just because a lot of the a lot of clients oftentimes under budget a little bit number three is choosing a style that you like number four decide on what you want in terms of like do you want digital files only versus albums and wall arts, all the tangible stuff number five contacting uh favorite photographer that you chose number six talk to the photographers and See if you like them. See if they're a good fit. See, you know, you know, but they're not. They're not weird. <laughs> and then number seven, um, the all the legal stuff. Check the contract and all that kind of stuff. So, John, do you want to take it away? Yeah. So, um, I'm gonna talk about um, my me and my wife's uh, perspective when we um, when we were deciding on photographer. And a videographer, or just a photo, uh, or just a photographer, it really depends on um, what you value, right? So for us, me and my wife, we um, we decided we only wanted a photographer because um, uh, I guess videography was like a little bit weird for me. I didn't want any every expression documented, you know, like all of our movements documented. We just wanted like key moments photographed, and uh, we were thinking photos it's it's um it's really timeless it's something that you can you can always have with you you can always have it framed printed and be uh, around your house whereas a video you'll probably just watch it once or twice or maybe once a year just to remember maybe it's different for other people but for us we didn't think that um i guess it's not something that we value but now now looking back Maybe, maybe we would have done like at least a ceremony part, just like the I do's or like um, have that in video just so we can, we can go back and look at how my wife cried when she said I do, you know, all those moments were in, you know, you're, you're not going to get that back. We also had the photos for that, but um, I guess video is still, I guess it hits differently, right? So those are the things that you're going to have to think about when you want to choose um, just photographer or a videographer, or both. Um, yeah, I think definitely the videography definitely hits the emotion part a little bit. Yeah, yeah. A little bit it, quicker than exactly. the only, yeah. Yeah, and, and and Taylor Jackson talked about this a little bit. Like, um, some moments are, are, are better captured video. A photo, it's a snippet of that moment, whereas a video, it's like, an entire, like I don't know, five, ten seconds of that entire emotion that's that moment that you can always go back to if if you feel like oh, I saw that photo yesterday and I feel like I want to watch the video again, video only, photographer only. I think it's it it goes hand in hand. Yeah, but, and also um, if you if you do the video, then you have the you have the proof of vow. 
<laughs> but does anyone just do yeah, video only guess. and not photo? Well, yeah, it's um, I it's would very say... very rare. But I've seen I've seen You've I've seen, seen it. those. Okay, yeah, I've yeah. never wow. seen it. Mm. Wow, never just video. No, yeah, because um, like um, I what I was what I was hearing is that a lot of a lot of people, a lot of the guests would take photos anyway. So mm. like, like they they were okay with the video. You always have a uh, photo. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> not the same, Eugene. Well, no, it's not me, but that's that's the but that's the sort of like the explanation that I that's got. True. That's true. Only video. I guess if you really like on a tight budget, bare minimum, I guess that's gonna yeah. On on the second point, I guess that's the next topic, right? <laughs> But like I've also shot some like for example ceremonies where they set up, you know, not necessarily just a live stream, but like someone's phone right in the middle. Like it's just you know it was in every single shot. It was really annoying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. And, like um, this will lead to our second point, but like sometimes, you know. I know we're going. I know sweat. we're going a little bit off tangents if I just ask this question. But do you what? guys ever like, like offer discount for unplugged weddings? Like where they not oh, allowed to code? use no. use use any of their <laughs> phones and stuff. Not it, it makes no. it makes but, sense. It For does. Me, no. Yeah. I just but, um. Go, go ahead, Pauline. No, I was gonna say some client like clients they do already do that, so which is super nice. Whenever I hear that ahead of time or when I get there, it's just it's like a sigh of relief. Like phew. But then also like more pressure because you're yeah, on. If you, like, if you, you miss can't it, miss yeah. anything. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, no, John, go ahead. Uh, for me, I just I educate my my clients, like um, just like what the wedding that I'm that coming up um next year. I just basically told her, yeah, it's better if you do it unplugged. And then I showed her a photo of images where in the phones were on the way, and this is how it looks like. And I cannot, I was like, I cannot edit the hand like that with the phone in their hands. It's better if they just focus on the ceremony itself. And she she told me. Oh, I thought it was um, it was common sense for people not to do that. Like that's rude. She was just kind of saying. So, some clients they assume that it's like common courtesy to like not take photos during ceremony. But I guess it's something that you really have to educate your client. Some of the clients won't know something like this, but there is so there is like you can spend like fortune on creating a full documentary style wedding video but you can have there are some of the photographers who would do only like highlight video and sometimes that could be just enough if you want like a full documentary wedding video then that would that's going to cost a lot of money but at the same and also at the same time that's going to require a lot of personnel as well so if you mm -hmm. don't want that sort of like full scale video there are people who does things like you know like more of a highlight videos and yeah. for much much cheaper price yeah. and don't need so many people and so yeah. that one like interfere with your wedding and all yeah. that sort of stuff so if it's yeah you want to continue with number two yeah so um setting a budget so for us um i guess we set an entire budget for the entire wedding and most of my like my wife really like she mostly arranged a lot of these things but um what really helped us we had um we we set the location first and then they did have packages wherein we can just choose the photographers. So, and they're all in the same budget range. So it wasn't, it wasn't hard to choose. We just had to choose the style. And then we just had to add hours depending on, on the coverage. I guess the budget part for us was like, how many hours do we want to cover? And for us, we wanted the entire day uh, covered, which is, I think it was an eight hour wedding. And then I think we just added two hours. It wasn't too expensive that we were like, yeah, you know, it, it depends on person to person or on what, what they value for, for wedding coverage. If if you're thinking um, you want to just do like, you want to cover like certain hours of the day, then that's completely up to the client. But for us, it was, um, we, we, we really value photography part of it so we we budgeted the amount so of hours that we have to add on so did the, you choose that venue because of the photography side of things or did you well how did you we, we, we chose you the, we, we chose the venue because we 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 like the venue okay 
Yeah, we wanted the like in terms there. of the looks or in terms of like food or um be, because of the looks and it's pretty it's by the beach. Oh, okay. Um, and where, did you of, where did you guys get married? Anyway? We got married in San Diego. Oh, okay. Hotel, like by La Jolla, La Jolla Beach. Oh, nice. Yeah. Pretty, very pretty. Yeah, and <laughs> it is. And there's not a lot of options when it comes to venues, so we um yeah, yeah we had to like kind of decide early on. And were these photographers like working for that hotel, or do they have? They had they like I think they had like their own business. Venues. Yeah, oh, they had their own. Venue. Okay. Yeah, they had their own venues, but you can choose. Like, I think we had four photographers that we can choose from. Mm -hmm. And then back then, you know, my eye for basically I didn't care so much about who it was. I, I all, the only thing I cared about is like it's um I guess the mood of how how the photos look like. I wanted it timeless. I didn't want like weird, uh, as long as it didn't look weird, like anything like, you know how like there's like, never mind, I don't, I don't want to talk about this. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to talk crap about. Yeah. In inexperience. Let's put it um, I don't want to talk about other people's style or like, you know, hmm. there's some certain styles that I didn't like. Okay. Of course, everyone has yeah. their own preference. Yeah. There's definitely yeah. some that I, I, I prefer guess, I guess. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to like, to look normal i guess that's my it was a bare minimum but our photographer she was great um we met her um and that's what that's what really sealed the deal when we met her we really like her personality and then the way she was telling us the way how she would take the photos you know and it was really important for us that we would be able to enjoy the day that it's not a photo shoot you know so, it's, um, so it's, you... i guess she's more like documentary style okay um, compared to like you know very posy bring all the flashes all the like the soft boxes like like us oh <laughs> as far as we only do we only do our flashes with them mostly, yeah no. you know we're, we're i think we're i think we're pretty good with that we don't we're not very disruptive mm. but uh, yeah well i think we also set her up for success it was a very pretty um venue mm -hmm. she didn't you have to she didn't have to use a lot of lights she only had to use it during the family formals inside the church because it was so dark okay so, so do you think um did what, did you go over the budget that you guys had at the beginning or like were you able to stick with it oh i think we were able to stick with it yeah oh yeah okay yeah, for the entire entire wedding yeah and for, so in the package like was it was the so the venue photography food like flowers and everything was included yes oh, okay yes. yeah i think i think oftentimes package deal is much easier to stick with it because yeah. it's like just there and then you know yeah. it's like mm -hmm. you know. and you just just they, they give you a lot of options on yeah. who the vendors are no i think the photo booth we had to um because we also had a photo booth i think we had to um get that separately okay they gave us like a list but it's like add-ons that's the thing like depending on what you value you can add on and they, yeah, they yeah. have like list of vendors that they can recommend yeah yeah, yeah which... but i think i think most of, like oftentimes i think when in, especially i think some of the clients that i had in in the past is usually if i were to ask like now all the prices that are available like i think all three of us i think all, all the prices are available on our website like uh -huh. it's very straightforward it's yeah like people if people were to come onto our website they can see how yeah. much they're going to be paying exactly but yeah. at that time i only had starting price and oftentimes people will still inquire like even there would a, a lot of people would just ignore that st starting price uh -huh. but like yeah. we're budgeting for like less than two thousand can you do right. this bro? Yeah. well they don't even they don't even see that sort of like a package or the service yeah. fee and oftentimes i feel like people uh, budget a little bit less than mm -hmm. than the real sort of like market value yeah. um just because a lot of couples are doing it for the first time and they don't really mm -hmm. know like even Correct. if they have been a bridesmaid or maid of honor for another another friend yeah. or something you know they don't know the all the ins and outs of the pricing yeah. and all that so i think yeah. oftentimes they do under budget a little bit so right. it's kind of important to budget um plus maybe sort of like maximum that you can spend depending on like like yeah. you said like what's the most yeah. important part like yeah. is it the price is it the price of the photographers or price yeah. of the you know the venue or you know price of 
I don't know. Um, a lot of people like to do uh, some. Some people like to do a lot of flowers, um, mm. and flowers. Flowers, I know they're very expensive. So, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, I didn't. I, I I didn't know you got married in um, San Diego. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. yeah. There are a lot of it's a lot really... of cool a lot of cool venues in San Diego. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, did you um now like while while we're on your wedding, um, did you guys end up getting um like a wedding album and stuff? Uh, no, we just um had digital files and um we just made our own album. Oh, but you didn't make it. Um, uh, my wife did. It's like a scrapbook. Okay. It's not like um, oh, gotcha. Yeah, because she likes to tinker with stuff. Um, nice. Yeah. Did you but, print any anything like big for like wall arts and stuff? We did. We did. We have a big yeah. um. We did. A, we do have a big one. Okay. Yeah. Where Where did you guys end up hanging it? Uh, it's in our bedroom. Both yeah, in the my, bedroom. Yeah, it's in the bedroom. Nice. My wife didn't want to hang it in the living room. It's like, oh, it's weird looking at myself. <laughs> like, yeah. But, yeah she, but she, she's okay looking at herself like in the bedroom? Yeah, I guess so. Because <laughs> like also... it's more private, you know. It's All more, that and you're yeah. usually sleeping. <laughs> exactly. That's the thing. We only go to our bedroom sleeping, showering. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not. We're always in our living room. Nice. Okay. Yeah. What we have in our living room is like my landscape photos. This. Mm. That's what she wanted to put in there. Oh, nice. But, yeah. All right. Let's move on to the um the point number three, I guess. Oh yeah. Um number three is um choosing your style. Choosing this choosing a style can be a very difficult thing for anyone to do. I think even the photographers would say like they don't really know how to you know describe their um the style. And you know, oftentimes we come up with all the all the cool well words and all the all the you know hip words that people use these days and try to describe our styles but one you know i don't think there's one word or you know few words that will completely sort of like describe our style so one of the things that i ask a lot of my clients to do regarding the styles is the going to pinterest or going to instagram and don't look at the you don't have to look at the people you don't look at the you don't have to look at the photographers but just either screenshot or you know um just save somewhere all the photos that you like you know with pinterest it's super super easy just because you can kind of just save it into one board um and then you you'll be able to look at all the photos later but by putting i uh, i think that you can do that with instagram as well actually but by putting everything that you like just not paying attention to the to, to the style like let's say let's say you think you like you know like light and airy so you don't have to always just like the photos that are light and airy but if there's any reason that you like the photos for the coloring for posing um for the way they use the light just because it's cool just if you just like all the photos if you just scrap all the photos together into one place You'll be able to see later in one page like what you really like. And that way, I think, is probably the best way to see what you like. And it may be surprising results for a lot of people just because no one's ever done it this way. No one has ever really tried that way. I think that actually applies to photographers as well. I think that's the that's kind of a good way to see like what you like and what you don't like and all that just going through that process will one you'll get to see a lot of photos two you'll be able to search some of the photographers in your area um who would you know who offers that kind of style and then three then maybe in that in the area maybe you'll be able to find some of the photographers maybe in your budget a little bit more just just having just knowing the sort of style that you want like whether like john was saying like if it's more of a candid documentary style you know that's a way of shooting but even that will be a good sort of like um indication in terms of how you how you want your day to be um it doesn't always have to be about the looks of the photos so yeah i think that's something that i always ask all my all my clients to do and ask them i ask them if i'm if i will be a good fit for you you know, after looking all th- you looking through all those photos, if if I'm not the good fit, then you know, even if I, even if I shoot my best wedding, you know, that's that's not the that's not the photos that you know the clients will like. So that's number three. 
number four is um, choosing choosing what you want. So like whether if it's just um, digital files that you want or do you want albums, do you want wall art, um, do you want some albums for your parents, grandparents? It's all this stuff. Um, you can actually decide at the end of it. Like you can, even after getting getting your photos um, delivered uh, from uh, from your photographer, like you can decide then. But it's always kind of nice to know know like ahead of time, or at least think about it ahead of time, because some photographers some some photographers work really well putting albums together. They will think about how that album is going to look and they will shoot certain elements and certain things to kind of fill up the um, albums and, and so on. So if you really want like a really nice looking album to, you know, keep it in your in your heritage, you know, show it to your show, show it to your kids and when when they get older or when they're born, <laughs> then it's kind of nice to sort of like know if you know like just plans a little bit ahead of time and also you can budget for that as well because albums not cheap some of the some of the bigger albums that that we sell um goes you know around four thousand dollars so just having sort of that sort of budget in your head is is kind of nice to work with it as well and also wall arts as well like some of the wall arts are uh, look just nice with some certain type of composition and some of the some of the photographers were would work really well um, knowing that, not saying you know they won't capture those shots, but they will capture those shots. But they just when they have that sort of wall arts in mind, it's much easier for them to plan uh, what kind of shot they want. Like is is it worth spending time to set up all the lights to to take one shot kind of thing? But if you're doing wall arts like really big wall arts like in the living room, um, above the couch or something like that, you know, those those will be well worth the time um, on your wedding day to spend so yeah that's that was number four number five pauline okay well number five is contact your favorite photographers but before you do that even just take a look at your photographer's art their website really take a deep dive into their work you shouldn't just contact everyone that you see that are local to you and that may have shot in that venue before if that if you already decided on your venue really reading their about page reading about them seeing what they put on the website because, you know, as us photographers, we know how much effort goes into creating these websites and making sure all the information is there. So once you do that, and once you found your top favorites, I would say like two to three, and then from there, maybe make a few more, like kind of as backup, then you can reach out and fill out their contact form if they have one, hopefully they should on their website. That's probably the best way to reach your photographer. That's Basically, number five, I would say it's quite simple. That leads to number six. Hopefully, your photographer reaches back to you soon. And if not, that's probably a big red flag that they might not be the one for you. <laughs> I'm, I mean, for me, I probably respond quite quickly within like one to two days. I don't know. What about you guys? How how soon do you guys reply? If I'm uh, if I'm prior? connected, like if mm -hmm. I'm not off the grid, if I'm not off the grid. Yeah. Then usually, as soon as I see it, then I so I usually reply within ten minutes. Um, ten minutes. That's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> That's, so that usually, is the explanation so high. <laughs> <laughs> usually, I try to get back like a lot. I I do have uh, like a couple of templates um, I have saved. Mm -hmm. So um, depending on what kind of question they ask, like I will bring one template up and just fill out yeah. all the all the things, um, and then just reach back to them as soon as possible but if i'm off off the grid then there's just there's just no way for me to kind of get back to them so i do sometimes take um up to two days yeah. never yeah i don't think it goes over 48 hours 60 hours is like is a it's the time that they should be contacting police um for you know, res rescue mission <laughs> good to know <laughs> for me it's also one to two days yeah yeah Especially like say, yeah. yeah, if you have the weekend off or something, like you're shooting exactly. a wedding, then yeah, um, I think that's yep, yep. a good amount. Yeah. So this is six point, talk to your photographers, see if you like them. So other things you can look at is, well, if they reply, seeing what their reply is first and then kind of going from there. For me, I do like to meet them 
either through like a Zoom meeting or a call. So I really would recommend that if you can set up a call with your photographer and kind of get to know each other. Um, I think that's a perfect first step to see if you guys will fit well together. You can ask all the questions, give them more details, start that relationship together. And then I guess another point is to set the right expectations. So again, that kind of goes with if you're talking to them, really giving them your honesty and like telling them what you your needs are. And if you have more questions, don't be afraid to like, I think photographers, you know, they're willing to learn also and like be open because they don't know what you're, you want really until you tell them what you want. So I think that's really important. Really setting the expectations as soon as possible if you have them. And yeah, I guess I didn't mention that to read their reviews before you probably reach out to them as well. I think those are pretty helpful, but hopefully most of the reviews are good. So I don't know if they're that helpful, but I guess it's more to see what to expect working with yeah. them. So I think yeah. I think oftentimes because like uh, reviews is, uh, you know, like, I mean, like, we we will only really only have good reviews on our mm -hmm. website, yeah. <laughs> so it's you know they were they're all good. But I think I think the content of the reviews are kind of important. Like, do you do this photographer take really good photos? I mean, is that the thing for this photographer, or is this photographer really a sort of like helper of like a, of the throughout the day? Like, are they good with the planning, or you know, mm. you know, just make them feel welcoming? You know make it ease and if there's a you know a lot of couples say the same thing in terms of like we're really bad with posing we've never done this before like is this something that that you guys can help with and but mm -hmm. some of the reviews if they say something like that then you know these these people will definitely enjoy that a little bit more when I started I actually did like complimentary engagement sessions just to give me an opportunity to like work with the clients and meet in person and see how well we fit together and kind of give them like a practice of what it would be like on the wedding day so I think that's really helpful also that's something to look at as well if your photographer offers that or has have an additional add-on yeah so I guess I guess no this this sort of like um tip or something something that I do a little bit I'm trying to do more and more but I think this is something that I, a lot of photographers can take advantage of so this is a technique that I learned from um, a photographer called Ben Hartley. He's known for his marketing, sort of like business side of things. So a lot of when when couples reach out to you, instead of just replying to them in email, reply to them in video message. So regardless of where you are, regardless of situation you're in, I mean, you don't want to be naked or anything, but, um, you know, <laughs> Like, like he, there was one video that he did uh, while he was running. He got an he got a inquiry, and he stopped. And while he was like sweating, and he still recorded the video and sent it back to them. But one the sort of I, I wouldn't go that far. Showing sort of like vulnerability, showing that sort of like the situation that you're in, and that 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 this photographer is taking priority to respond to you is is a sort of like a good, good good indication to couples and also when you put video message into it you can put a lot of emotion and you can actually put a lot of information in instead of just writing long email so that's i thought that was quite quite useful uh when i was in the office i actually did the screen capture of the screen and guiding through guiding them through like on my website guiding them through my packages and everything Mm -hmm. um so i and i did i did close that one so <laughs> I, did, I, did, I did get them as a, as a wedding client so that was good yeah i mean i think that's probably helpful for some but some clients might not like that also right so it really depends on you know the photographer's personality and kind of their vibe as well okay number seven i feel like there's so many in between points that we can talk about but number seven is to check the contract when the photographer sends it to you very important very important but I know most people don't read it but you should read it I mean I personally haven't had a client come back to me and say oh can you add this or can you take away this so mm -hmm. again maybe my clients just don't read the contract I'm not sure but it's really important to at least skim it if possible or if you if it's all jargon to you just even ask the photographer to go through it with you I think that that should be another thing that should be 
like a general practice. Kind of what you said, Eugene, like going through the packages, why couldn't they just go through the contract with you as well, right? And that's another step. Yeah. And yeah, there are many things that can differ from photographer to photographer. So things could be like the amount of retainer that may, they may need, the timing of the payments. One common question for sure is like how long it takes to get the final gallery. I get that question a lot. At the number of photographs included, I don't, I'm not sure if every photographer do disclose that, but they do have at least a general number that they could give mm -hmm. you. But again, there's so many factors that are involved. So yeah I also i think i think also i want to point out like oftentimes um a contract is sort of like i i want to say it's more like a safety net it's not mm -hmm. it's not like all the photographers will follow things oh, yeah. on the contract i mean that's not the business practice that we do but if there is something were to go wrong that's mm -hmm. what we're going to see so i think oftentimes when people look at the contract, they get a little bit scared. Like, yeah. is this what we're getting? And that kind of mm -hmm. thing. Um, so yeah, I definitely want to at least at least if you if you're coming to me for for weddings, um, yeah. or or Pauline or John, um, us three at least, we you know like the, those contract is literally just a safety net. We we're not going anywhere near that. We'll be a way above standard that than was on the contract. That's that's just a legal side of things. Mm -hmm. I think my process has been been getting quicker, but I'm still at I still say about fifty days, um, just to be safe. I don't want to want clients to wait for their photos for too long, um, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I don't want to pro like over promise yeah. and not being able to deliver it on on the day if something were to happen. Like like for example, this year when there were so many back to back um, shoots yeah. happening. Um, just becomes overwhelming so 50 days is i think is a good number to have do you guys have any set like how many how many photos do you guys deliver this past proposal it was less than an hour and i delivered like 115 or so okay if you if you're in canada go to poland she delivers a lot of photos you know what i think it's because i don't know maybe i'm just getting better because at first i barely delivered like 40 I would say so mm -hmm. maybe I'm just now like more comfortable showing more things versus just the best ones mm -hmm. maybe now I even make such minor adjustments that I'm like I just like them all I'm gonna give them all to you mm -hmm. no I, I think I think I do the same like so I promise uh, 25 photos an hour yeah so if they were to do like uh, four hours that's yeah. 100 photos but what the sort of the number that I'm kind of, kind of going off is oftentimes if I were to do four hour shoot uh, like not a wedding but if i were to do a four-hour shoot that would more, end up more like 300 400 photos mm -hmm. i think out of that 300 400 photos i will pick probably like 80 to 100 photos as sort of like my favorite or like highlights of the day yeah um so i think in that sense it's still kind of sort of like valid number but yeah as a client like i guess if they're thinking about in terms of how many photos like think about your timeline like, is there a lot of time in between that you're going yeah. from one location to another which is when yeah. like no photos are taken versus yeah. if you're just in one location all day that's gonna make a difference mm. don't just yeah. think yeah. like that number is final like there's yeah. so many other factors involved what we're discussing right now this is sort of the expectation to have so like it's yeah. something that we cannot really think of but at the same time it is something that we it's nice to know before the session before the wedding so yeah always kind of discuss talk if there's any doubt ask your photographers best way to do it have you ever had a, a client say hey this is not enough photos uh never no. yeah <laughs> never. Yeah, that's, yeah yeah i feel like it's very rare that they care about like oh this is not i've had i've had a couple of uh clients who said this is too many yeah i think it's too many that's most crazy. of the time <laughs> No, as in, as in, I think it's, I think what they were referring to is that it was just, just too many of the sort thing? of like similar photos. Oh, okay. mm. Because like the reason that I would deliver, like it's even if it's a similar scene, like some people look nice in this one, some people look nice in this one. And it's a mm. funny moment so that you don't really want to have it in an album, but at the same time, you're not gonna, you're still going to show it to your clients. Like that's still yeah. part of the day. Yeah. So that that will still have it, but yeah. 
you know, that's not necessarily meaning they will make the cut to the cut to the album. So in those sense, I think they were saying like this is too many to kind of yeah. find the photos and dig. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. those are good ones and stuff. But exactly. Yeah. Plus black and black and whites. What do you do? So uh, th- actually, that that actually brings a good question. Do you deliver mm-hmm. black and white and color of the same one, or do you just deliver black and white only? Um, no, I, I pick and choose um, which will make it to a black and white photo. Okay. Um, I guess it's an artistic choice for me. Um, it's, same, it's, it's the same thing with the entire gallery for a wedding. I would really try my best to to pick what's the just what's the best. Even if they have this different different expression in this one photo and a diff- different expression in one photo. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's one of the things that we're getting paid for. And sometimes it's really hard to decide. I guess I don't want to put that burden. Just like what you're saying, there's going to be clients where it's too many photos. And then, yeah. you know, that decision, I guess, piles up to them. And then they're like, okay, now we have to decide like which ones, which photos are going to be, I don't know, in the album or which which photos are we going to download in from big time, you know, stuff like that. I, I think, yeah. I try to yeah. like really. I it's part of my my process, my creative process. Like what will make it to the gallery. How about you, Pauline? Kind of both, but mostly I do a version of color and black and white because I just like that photo so much. <laughs> no, I do the same. I deliver both black and white and color. Yeah. I've had in the past. I did. I think I delivered just the black and white. And the clients will come back. Do you have oh, the really? of, Yeah. <laughs> if I do that, it's probably because the lighting's terrible and I can't save it. <laughs> yeah. No. no. It's, that, that's one. Of, that's another reason that I do it. I'm like, but so I'm like, yeah. sorry. I think this will look much better in black and white. <laughs> or if I'm just too lazy to save it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. there are. I think. I think. I think a lot of people, a lot of photographers, do change to black and white because of the, 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 the saving thing, but. I think mm-hmm. some photos look much nicer in black and white. There are both. There are they those... just look good both ways. So yeah, then yeah. I would deliver both. Yeah. So but yeah, I have, I've never had a comment saying where's the color version. <laughs> no. So. No, I think I think oftentimes, like when they do ask me, like it's they're just out of you know curious, like it's a good photo, like but mm-hmm. would it look would it look better in color kind of thing? Going back to the contract, in my contract, I do have a clause that says like. You know, it's the base of my artistic vision. Yeah. So, yeah. again, that's for backup. <laughs> yeah, like I said, like yeah. like because a contract is is a safety net. Like mm-hmm. in terms of what I'm saying, it's yeah. and what they're wanting is it's just oftentimes it's I think it's about out of curiosity kind of thing. Okay, so to summarize, it's really up to you. <laughs> it's like go through these points, see what brings out at you, what's most important. If photography is the most important, then, you know, make that decision first. In my experience, most people who come to me, they've already decided on a venue. So I feel like venue is most people's top priority because they want that first. Photography is probably like maybe third or something. And then all the details come after that. So reach out to the photographers that are your favorites that look good to you. Once you've read a little bit about them, if you get a chance to talk to them, meet them, great. That's going to help you decide even better. And again, go back to your gut. Trust your gut. If you don't gel with them, you don't vibe with them, then that's probably not the person for you. Even if you like their photos a lot, at the end of the day, it's your wedding. Um, The experience is the most important. And then the photos will will show if you have the best day. Like regardless of the photography skill, um, I think personality, if you stick well with that photographer and if you can if you think you can just say whatever that you feel like it's is necessary just having that comfort level i think is the most important thing amazing all right hopefully hopefully this was informative um podcast i think a lot of i think we we thought this was a very important episode just because Sort of like January and February is the time that a lot of our clients kind of reach out to us, um, you know, asking for the price, asking if we're available, asking, you know, um, if some of the things are possible and not possible, if we do highlight video or, you know, we get all the, all, a lot of small, small inquiries. Um, so, 
small or big, we thought just having this sort of ideas in terms of what's, you know, what might be valid, what are some of the, this, some of the things that we do discuss uh, when um, booking, booking a client or when you guys are booking a photographer. Hopefully this was very interesting, intuitive, informative. Yeah, hope you find amazing photographer in your area or wherever, wherever you do your wedding. Next week is going to be interesting one. I think it's actually a weird, <laughs> weird thing for me to say because it's going it's to be about be you. <laughs> it's going to be a Q and A about me. Whole session, whole episode, just about me. These two will be asking some question that might be informative um, for some of the couples who are looking to hire me, maybe. Or you know, if you just want to just know about me. I don't think there'll, mm. there'll be and there'll be anyone who, who who is interested to do that. But <laughs> that's what we have next week. As always, you can find us on. We've actually ex been expanding. So if you do listen on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Castbox, you can we're available on all four platforms, and you can watch us on Spotify and YouTube. I think that's it for us this week. Amazing. All right. All right, guys. Have Thank a good you. week. Bye.